The worst commentary creator on YouTube. 45 minutes. The future. This was from six months ago, man. She had GTB Dreyer sends us she copy paste that and puts in TTS with a random subway surfer video and uploads that. No, um, what Charlie was saying in the video that I just went from, he was saying that that's the only way she could get away with, um, what is it called? With, like, advancing or keeping or maintaining her audience because she's, like, completely gone off the fucking deep end. Yeah, like, a rebranding. Because right now what she's doing, she's still doing, like, actual content quote-unquote actual content but where is it i can't get to her fucking channel how do you spell her stupid name man fuck it anyway yeah she's delisted what okay yeah wait she made a video an hour ago <laughs> but like it looks baity right it looks like ai right I am, am i absolutely wrong adorable. i know that's a pretty basic generic even though that first backwards ass medicinal belief is like she still makes videos but there's like a rumor that we act to it no absolutely no i'm not giving her fucking views i'm not doing it damn that dislike ratio yeah it has only been up for an hour internet amethyst made a story about her Okay, 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 okay. I think I will glance at this one. Illuminati. Let me see. And... Man, I really got lazy ass copycats or something. Yeah, well, she's. It's that. How does she pump out this much content in such a short amount of time? is questionable blair is illuminati oh okay i didn't know that i didn't know the connection a secret ingredient is theft yes shit let's sprinkle it in yes gaslight girl boss uh gatekeep did you pray today i did i did we're praying today for uh for for education, I guess. Illuminati is a video essay channel about scams and other hot button issues. And if you okay. know who I am, then you probably know who she is. No, There's I don't. There's some obvious similarities between our contents. We both produce fully scripted documentaries, for lack of a better word, about topics people find interesting. Oh no, I've seen Kiro the Wolf. That's the that's the furry that actually like fricked his dog, and then like posted about it and shit. Dang. She's called out Autism I Speaks, remember that. SeaWorld, that was from a long time Andrew ago. Tate, and The Right. It's time once again to stop pyramid schemes, scams, and other forms of corruption. A noble pursuit, no doubt. But recently, a boatload of information has come out about Illuminati yeah. that has painted her as a manipulative, vindictive individual who in many ways is comparable to the people she criticizes. Leaking private information to discredit someone, lying to her audience, paying people to sift through her ex-collaborators. She claims he said that in a sad milk video, but can but can't I'll pay you $200 to find it. Uh, what the fuck? Content to find dirt on them and running an alt account to try and ruin their career behind the scenes. All of this and more has led to the destruction of her reputation amongst viewers. The most ironic this part is, is that six she started it all herself too. by calling out another YouTuber for supposed plagiarism. This is the turbulent story of Illuminati. What the fuck? The first video on Illuminati's channel, uploaded at the beginning of 2019, is titled, What is an MLM? The history- You know what, the 271,000 views for four years ago, that's actually really good. I watched the videos before this whole controversy. That's perfectly fine, you're allowed to watch someone without knowing that they're a bad person. Charlie is six months late. Well, yeah, he did say he kind of didn't want to talk about it, but now he's kind of, you know, informing about the drama. I guess. History of multi-level marketing. 
It introduces viewers to MLMs, a controversial post. marketing strategy Fuck where yeah! salespeople earn income Win not only from direct product sales, but also from sales made by others they've recruited to the business, rather okay. than receiving a fixed salary. All that may sound like a nebulous definition, an easier way to understand the concept is by thinking about it like a pyramid. At the highest level, you have the person who either created or sells a particular product. This person then recruits others underneath them to sell the product as well, yeah. and those individuals in turn recruit others below them to sell that same product. The people at the bottom of this structure contribute a portion of their earnings to those above them, as each salesman or woman receives a share of the money earned by their recruits. If you haven't already- Have you ever been contacted by someone who you, see, you used to go to high school with about like joining a pyramid scheme? I swear to god I have been, and it was like a- It was such a weird interaction. <laughs> it's so strange, man. Yes, you have been? Does it happen in Europe as well? It happens in America. That implies I had friends in high school? No, no, no. This, is, this wasn't a friend. It was just someone I knew in high school. It doesn't mean anything. I've been to herbal meeting to cringe. It was very cringe. Herbal life meeting. Oh. It was a thing in the early 2000s and 10s. It was a thing. I think it was a thing everywhere, to be honest. Happens in Europe, too. Okay, that's good to know. I thought it was just of an American thing. Already noticed, the triangle shape is what's caused many to label multi-level marketing as a My pyramid scheme. My cat is scheme, trying to snuggle me, going man. going as far as to call them scams. So Blair loud. set out to expose these MLMs to her audience, with this okay. video in particular being an introduction. Her channel art even reflects this theme, with the recognizable triangle-shaped head with the large eye in the middle, based on the Eye of Providence, which you're probably familiar with from seeing it in pop culture. Or, mm -hmm. if you grew up when I did, your obvious introduction to it was Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls. However, even in her first video, it's obvious that this isn't Blair's debut on YouTube. She welcomes back her viewers. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Blair, or the Illuminati, and today I'm super excited to talk about the subject that made me make this video. We're talking about- That's because the channel creation date is actually May 9th, 2013. That's a long that time a ago, sure. content was at some point removed. What kickstarted Illuminati's initial rise to popularity wasn't video essays, but a much older trend that took YouTube by storm a few years ago. Reddit videos. As of March 21st, 2019, Reddit, we yeah. We act! We act! We act! Oh my god! It comes full circle! It's always Reddit! We act! The Illuminati channel had accumulated nearly 100,000 subscribers from browsing subreddits and reacting to them, laughing at r slash entitled parents, r slash choosing beggars, r slash nice guys and nice girls, respectively, and criticizing anti-vaxxers was the bread and butter of her channel. Over the years, Reddit has accumulated a considerable amount of cringe-worthy content. Shocking, I know. Prompting yeah, users crazy. to subscribe to specific subreddits dedicated to showcasing it. Popular YouTubers like Soot House, Sorrow TV, Wild Spartans, and of course Blair took advantage of this readily available material and made content out of the best of the best of it. They found that they could pump out content with ease by selecting 20 or so cringy posts from these conveniently organized subreddits and reading them aloud in their videos with minimal editing required. Surprisingly, this approach brought them significant success, surpassing what one might expect from such simple content. <laughs> what the fuck is sock on? Wait! <laughs> What? <laughs> what is leg of my Is it something from Shock on? Shock on the nuts! At the before. time, there was one playlist on Illuminati's channel that gave an inkling of what was to come, titled Anti MLM. By early 2019, the Reddit trend had already begun to die. Soothouse and Sorrow TV, who had capitalized on it the most, stopped posting altogether shortly oh. after it reached its peak. Other Honestly, kind of based. Get your bag and get out. Who hopped on the bandwagon like Call Me Carson quickly hopped right off. If Blair wanted her channel to keep growing, she needed a new type of content, or she risked fading into obscurity. Luckily, a life raft would come her way in the form of video essays. Sunny B2, Patrick CC, and others began to make videos documenting interesting subjects. Good From the ever-classic rise sure. and fall of an internet personality, to videos about specific controversies or websites, and even lists and icebergs. You name a mildly entertaining topic, and there's bound to be a video essay about it. It's a genre composed of well-edited, easy-to-digest content that gives the audience new food for thought, whether relatively basic or highly philosophical, on a weekly basis. How Sunny V2 ruined video essays? Dude, you're cooked. Sunny V2's a good one. I don't know if 
about you guys? I like Sunny V2's um content. I reacted to it once. Yeah, it's not bad. How did he ruin anything? <laughs> He doesn't deserve the hate he gets. Yeah, because at least he makes good content. I mean, does he done anything bad? I don't fucking know. Blair rightly viewed this burgeoning market as a land of opportunity. As sure. I previously mentioned, this type of content is the only one that even remains on Blair's channel. She quickly became dead set on exposing various- I- uh, yeah, you, you know what? I remember she hated PETA and she shit on, on, on PETA all the time. Rightfully so, so sh sure. Like- I don't know. I watched, I think, one of the PETA videos. One of these. I don't remember which one. What is what's this? Um, I remember someone from Sue House saying they stopped because channels with text to speech voices doing the same thing essentially outperform them because of quantity. Yeah, YouTube loves quantity and quality at the same time, and AI generated text to speech bullshit can actually outperform actual channels. And it's very, very sad but true. Yeah. companies, including Lime Cosmetics, Chanel, Herbalife, The Salvation Army, and any MLM she came across. She also ventured into broader topics like the education system, expanding beyond her specific focus on company exposés. The education system is as outdated as it is broken. If sure. it doesn't work for us and hinders students from feeling encouraged, creative, and free to explore the world around them, make no mistake, it's broken. However, it's important to note that Blair's approach to exposing these companies comes short of proper investigative journalism. Instead, she gathers information from news articles and other documentaries and presents it in a condensed format for her audience. Okay. This doesn't mean her content lacks legitimacy, but it does indicate that her videos don't necessarily go above and beyond what typical YouTubers like myself do. By 2020, Blair had ditched Reddit altogether. And who could blame her? The video essays were vastly more successful. By the middle of that year, she had earned nearly half a million subscribers. Her videos That's a were lot. Lot. more than 250,000 views, and she was uploading every few days. She was easily one of, if not the most prolific video essayist on YouTube. The output was unheard of. Each of these videos were fully researched, written, and edited in full without cutting any real corners. <laughs> videos on her channel were now broken up. So was it a group of people, or was it just her claiming to be her on her own? I'm considering YouTube videos does that. YouTube nowadays is taking articles so it'll make it more interesting for the short attention span zoomers of today. Yeah, like editing, like cutting, lots of jokes. You know, like loud noises. Oh my god, haha, -ha, memes. That's how you win. She has her own editors. She made a company that hired editors. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I understand that. Into categories such as psychology, so that's why she history, got to shady businesses and charities, and of course, MLM deep dives, which were still a tried and true method of getting clicks. Faceless companies that profit off of recruiting others to sell a product many consider useless are easy to mm -hmm. hate, and for every hateable MLM, you can be sure there was an Illuminati video to cover it. Now, you may be wondering how Blair managed to produce such an incredible amount of content on such a regular basis. There's and no way she's doing everything. On her own, right? Well, the simple answer is no. Even if she were taking 60 milligrams of Adderall every day with three Starbucks orders on the side, it would still be too much work for one person. Just like mainstream creators <laughs> such as Mr. Beast, mode. many video essay That's channels have started good. paying others to assist lie. them in producing content more frequently without sabotaging quality. Creators like Patrick CC, Magnates Media, and myself have contracted additional help to keep a steady output of videos. So yeah. yes, you guys can rest easy and stop asking if I do meth in the comment section. If you guys check the description <laughs> of Blair's video starting from 2019, you'll find a list of researchers, writers, editors, and thumbnail designers who have contributed to her work. Collaboration plays a crucial role in the success of many creative endeavors, and YouTube is no exception. Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket, a bi-weekly series where bad businesses go to die. We will discuss any and everything from bad charities, terrible CEOs- I'm gonna be honest, I never liked her character design. Wait, that's how I kind of avoided her because I just didn't like her character design. I'm like, I know it's like a petty thing. I just didn't like it from an objective standpoint. I don't like the triangle head. I don't like the fucking eye with the brow with the lashes and shit. I thought it was kind of corny, but I mean, to each their own. I thought it was unique. No, it is unique. I just don't like it. And that's okay. I didn't shit on her for it. I just didn't watch her content. And businesses what a shallow fox. A I have preferences, man. Illuminati, and today we're talking I have preferences, about I'm sorry. Come up quite a few times before. Some Don't you have lashes too? <clears throat> um, I do, but I'm saying like it's one eyeball with lashes and it just... It, 
I don't know, I just thought it was weird. I thought it was weird. Mm, man. Mm. But those helping Shallow her with the contest for the most bro, part, didn't have online of their own. Instead, they were seeking behind the scenes employment. At the same time, Blair was, was also bad. collaborating with like other it. creators who wanted to grow their brand. The Sad Milk channel was launched in December of 2019 is a collaborative Shit, project milk. between YouTubers featuring Flinders, mm. Illuminati, One Topic at a Time, Oz Media, Salty Reddits, The Click, and Wonderstruck Guy. It was I'm essentially fine, a fine. reaction channel that posted similar content to the reading Reddit videos that made Blair blow up in the first place. The food truck sign said fries five dollars and cheese two dollars and i only realized the cheese was meant for hamburgers after they <laughs> yeah, I didn't need this. <laughs> God, you want cheese fries uh Cheese go. fries. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This channel would be a successful venture, boasting over 200,000 subscribers. It also helps to boost the careers of those who contributed to it, who could now cross pollinate their audience to share viewers. The okay. channel posted videos throughout 2020, despite a community post outlining that a few of its members, namely Salty, OT, and The Click, would no longer be appearing in its videos. At the time, the only explanation given for this was that they had some creative differences behind the scenes and that those leaving wanted to focus more on their own. This is why I don't really like the idea of collabing with people because you find out their preferences and it can lead to problems especially when it's not just one it's not two it's not three it's like six people or eight six to eight people there's never going to be a complete agreement inside of a per uh, inside of a group of more than like maybe two or three people yeah drama is easy to start some people feel like they're not talking enough they don't get like some person might say, oh, I, I have more, um, what is it called? Like, I'm putting in more effort into this channel than you guys. I should be getting more money. That's, yeah, it, it becomes an issue. When you collab with that many people, Their own specifically. Careers. The post assured the viewers that the channel was not done for and would still be posting videos with the remaining cast, even teasing some IRL group content. But on December sure. 24th, 2020, its final video was posted, starring Illuminati, Oz, Damian Lee, and Wonder. After this, the channel was dead in the water, with fans wondering mm. why they left it behind. But at the end of the day, creative differences was as good an explanation as any for the initial breakup. Blair continued posting content, refining her editing, writing, and Topics until her channel was running like a well-oiled machine, as did her peers. The Click yeah. channel grew to more than 1 million subscribers, and Oz Media similarly grew to more than half a million. Blair's channel, meanwhile, peaked at 1.7, a level most creators Damn. can only dream of. 250 million channel views is sure to equate to a lot of AdSense money as well, and Blair continued to be one of the most successful creators in the video essay space. Venturing Honey, more so yeah. into political content, such as criticizing trends from conservatives that she saw as disingenuous. Nobody knew much about sure. these creators outside of their videos, especially Blair, seeing as her content was relatively impersonal. Her opinion was certainly relevant to the content, but it wasn't like the viewpoints she expressed were anything out of the ordinary. For the most part, it was the research and presentation that made her videos worthwhile for the audience yeah, to come back having, to time and time and again. And having a mascot that doesn't really reveal your face can be kind of also impersonal and relatable, I guess. Which is like what you guys said. You guys are like, oh, I actually like her unique model. And I'm like, okay, that's fair. I don't like it, but that's okay. What's up, Drama Nation? Oh my God, we're here with a Killer Kim star talking about... <laughs> Illuminati. Should have faced them before this too. Month. Yeah, but nobody, nobody really knew about it. Nobody knew about it. Like I didn't know about that personally like i only knew her as like the triangle face with an eyeball that's it been where the story ended but thanks to blair it's not i'm assuming a lot of people didn't know ah here we go the first domino in toppling Blair's empire was actually pushed by her. On April 20th, 2023, Blair tweets out, Not at Legal Eagle broaching my editors to take my video style. Uh, and when they didn't give up the info, they literally Jesus. copied, and by the way, I have the messages from my editors, and found an email from them too. Just changed the color from purple to blue, huh? Interesting. This is an allegation of plagiarism. She claims that someone from another YouTuber's team tried to steal her editor's style, had been caught fishing for information about how to execute said style, 
and when the information wasn't given, they just figured it out themselves. She followed this up with an email from the editor in question who wrote, I work as an editor for Legal Eagle, and I was wondering if there were some After Effects plugins you guys use for things like the intro to the first NFL video, where the lighter color appears to stick out in 3D. We could recreate it, but we figured there was probably a faster method you guys were using. Here's the video I'm talking about so you know what I mean. Thanks, Danny. Blair then states that he also went to my Discord to try and get more to copy the style. Here we How do you prove that? What do you mean go and copy my style? What the fuck? Yo, comics, stop copying my style of editing. You're cutting videos the same way I do. You're in my Discord. You plagiarized me. <laughs> Shit! Here we have the editor, Danny, asking if he's allowed to post a video essay he made inspired by Blair's channel since he wouldn't want to break a no self promo rule. Eight minutes later, he asks if there's some way he can talk to one of the editors because he'd like to know how they did a specific effect. Another user tells him he has to be a higher rank in the server to post links and then directs him to the proper channel. He follows up again by asking if he could speak to the editors, but this is where the screenshot ends. Blair then shows the two videos side by side. Oh my fucking god, it's not even the same, man! It's not even the same, it's a fucking, it's a virtual screen tear next to a fake, uh, to a real, uh, paper tear. It's different, you're a schizo! I would understand if it was like he took a paper tear and it was the exact same one, like I could maybe understand, it's still a little bit fucking cringe, but okay. Like, I could, I could understand it a little bit in, like, the mind of someone who is unhinged and is, like, really defensive. Even then, it's not, like, I would be like, yeah, this is defi definitely, like, reasonable. That's insane, man! It's a virtual tear! It doesn't even look similar! First hers, and then the as evidence of this plagiarism. She follows us up with another example of a highlight effect being used on text to add to her narrative that Legal Eagle's editors were stealing. Piss. Massive what piss. the fuck, man? Oh. <laughs> what? Everyone highlights when you see an article that is being posted that has a lot of gibberish. Oh no, a highlight effect. Oh shit, it's over. And, th and it, even then, this one, is it a fake one or a real one? I think this is a f no, actually, you know what, it's real, but <laughs> they're not even done in the same way. It's a fucking highlighter effect. Also, thank you, gamer, for the fucking prime. <laughs> thank you, scavenger. That show is literally used on cable TV news. I've seen uh, crime shows that do the exact same thing because nobody's gonna, re I just don't get the reasoning. If it was a different color, I think she was still bitch about it. And Legal Eagle's a color is blue. Hers is purple. How is this plagiarism? Feeling her style. Blair concludes by saying, To be honest, I wouldn't have believed any of this was trying to replicate my videos if not for the email and Discord stuff that was done preemptive to their video coming out. This is some... Uh, oh my god. I, 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 oh my god, dude. I, this, is, this is the shit I fear going into a, into the social media universe is someone accusing me of, like, some dumb shit when I'm trying to just be normal. Asking about an effect, going into the channel and acting like a normal human being, like, holy... The, it, it screams... Uh, is the word nepotism correct? I think it is. Like, nepotism. Egoism, being an egotistical bitch, you know? Bro, I can't. He went into my Discord to ask about an effect, and that's plagiarism. Narcissism? Okay, narcissism, excuse me. I don't think I meant nepotism. It, it's. it's <sighs> and then she tries to sue them, apparently. She tries to sue them. Oh, like, talk about, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but just make it a little different. She finishes with this <sighs> meme about copying schoolwork to illustrate her point. Now, while Blair's initial tweet <sighs> did get more than 700 likes. That's how you know you're salty. Not only do you make a public tweet about it, you make a meme out of it to show, haha, I'm actually not that mad, but also I'm really mad. Alana, you're a fox girl, you plagiarized Annie? Yeah, totally. I went to a different RS, different rigor. We're both Fox girls. You're right. I'm. I'm sorry. I will. I, I will. I will kneel to my queen. 
I wanna teach me how Tangio works, gets plagiarized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Every follow-up tweet she made on the thread was increasingly less popular as many realized how ridiculous this allegation was. Yeah, yeah, Vox does it too. I remember Vox loves to highlight yellow text in their videos. Everyone fucking does it. It's an easy way to get draw attention to the audience to a to like a big wall of text where it's relevant to what you're talking about. Yeah, I know Vox is cringe, but I'm saying, like, it's true. Like, it, Vox is known for it, but it's not like a... It's not like other channels can't do that. As they read on. It's standard Firstly, stuff. Firstly, any points about editing is hard to justify in the first place because been every low. video editor draws from inspiration <laughs> when creating content. On top of that, people's editing style on YouTube usually just comes yeah, down look, to basic look. effects and presets, which the video editors don't Look, gaming highlight, text highlighter, highlighting, like, underlining shit. Make. Like, what they the fuck? They come with software like Adobe Premiere, Sony Vegas, and DaVinci Resolve. But not only is the initial premise shaky on its own, the actual examples she shows, being the ripped paper and highlighting effects, are extremely common visuals for video essays to use on YouTube. Thousands of independent creators have employed these two techniques. How to create Vox highlighter effect After Effects 2019. By the way, guys, I, Tangia is off. I don't know how to tell you this. I'll play it after, but yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. How to create Vox Highlighter fan? Yeah, like, what the fuck is this? All the way back in 2019? <laughs> Take it off. The highlighter effect in question is commonly referred to by many as the Vox Highlighter effect because of the video publisher, Vox, using it in their videos often. There's plenty of tutorials, too, both old and new, that inform aspiring editors how to create Vox, Vox animated box background, Vox audio wave, Vox dots grab, and Vox isn't suing them because it's like, who cares? The same goes for this ripped paper effect, with thousands of stock photos being available for commercial purchase that showcase the same thing. And plenty of YouTubers and documentaries have used that background for its simple, appealing look on thousands of other occasions as well. To the details fine. aside, the intentions of Danny, Legal Eagle's editor, just don't come off as malicious. It's as simple as that. He even states he could recreate the effects himself, but thought it was more convenient to ask for assistance. For someone like Blair, whose channel contains almost nothing purely original and is... Go, uh, I, I don't understand the logic of going after someone who's clearly more... Um, not more apt, what's the word? Um, more knowledgeable, more... Like, yeah, I guess intelligent. I mean, it's, I know it's like a very basic thing, but it's like, it, he, he he's a real lawyer. He went to school, but you're trying to go against him on the very thing that he knows way more about than you? <laughs> Like, especially about the law. Yeah, exactly. Like, common sense, I guess. I mean, no, no, not common sense, because it's like... I don't know if Legal Legal had as many subscribers or had a bigger footprint in the YouTuber thing, but... Yeah, out legaling a lawyer, I don't think that goes very well. Not 99% of the time, I don't think it goes very well at all. Like many channels, a melting pot of various ideas and influences from all over the place to complain about her editing style being copied, something she isn't even Crazy. particularly known for, is strange. Many creators and the replies express their confusion. Your example is highlighting text? Vox would like a word, as would my videos <laughs> from 2015, and just about a million other creators. You think you invented the highlighter animation and have a claim to it? We've been using that effect before your channel even existed. Just yeah, exactly. As, as, uh, pay, the pay Paper tear thing is what gets to me. They don't even look the same, man! Just to clarify, one of Legal Eagle's editors asked one of your editors what plugin they used for a personal video they were working on for their own channel. I take plagiarism really seriously, so I'm interested oh, in an explanation of what... of what exactly is wrong here. Furthermore, some began questioning if this wild and baseless accusation was just a one-off incident or part of a larger pattern of behavior from Blair. Legal Eagle himself responded the same day in confusion, reiterating the points many had already made before he managed to address the controversy stating, YouTube is great because it's collaborative and the rising tide raises all ships. My team and I always try to provide original, high-quality, informative content. We try to help others when they ask for it. There aren't really any trade secrets around here. Blair quietly deleted the post and didn't make another public statement for the time being. <laughs>
<laughs> she deleted her post. The internet never forgets, man. Seemingly backing off on her prior stance. Oh However, my. the floodgates had been opened. H Bomber Guy responded with his own accusation, saying that Blair had plagiarized the documentary on her own channel and in a much more egregious way. Professor Hugh Fudenberg. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic child patients with blood products. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the... You didn't even change up the wording. I get... I totally understand taking inspiration, but you didn't even change the adjective bizarre into like, I don't know, rephrasing it. Oh my God. Why is it always the people who say like, they, that, that you copy some shit or they do something? Oh, you're this, you're this, you're this. It turns out that they're the ones doing it. Self-reporting. Yeah, it's like self-reporting. Exactly. Projection. It's always those people the ones that are fucking starting shit food and drug administration which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products now not only was the initial allegation discredited but her credibility as a narrator was done for she looked to be guilty of the same thing she had accused others of and to a much greater degree plagiarism is one of the yeah, most serious accusations you can levy against a creator since it devalues their work entirely and with this new accusation towards blair it was about her writing not just some video editing trick in hindsight, her tweet that started this all looked like projection. Her deleting her original tweet against Legal Eagle didn't stop those flooding her replies, demanding an explanation. <laughs> man, oh man, man, what a fucking backfire that is. People who will flame me for a specific thing is just projecting that on other people. I had a... I had like a moment one time when I was playing a video game uh, I forget what it was. I think it was Guild Wars 2 or some shit. Someone was accusing me of cheating, and then it turns out that they were cheating. Like, they would not stop. Every time we would get matched into a ranked lobby, um, she, w uh, well, she, well, it was a girl character, but I don't know. They would accuse me of cheating because I would beat them in every 1v1, and then it turns out that what they would do, they would win trade every single time at, like, higher MMR. And that's how they climbed the ranks faster than everyone else. And then they got banned for it. And then they came out on Twitter saying like, oh my God, I got banned for, for win trading. And I'm like, holy shit, you're actually protecting. You call everyone else a cheater, but then you turn out to be cheating. It's like a, I don't know. It's like a little kid, you know, when they start hiccuping and like fucking crying and shitting their pants when they're, when they're caught lying. It's like that Asian. kind of thing. For now, she stayed silent, apart from a statement the same day claiming someone had been trying to hack into her accounts. Meanwhile, the drama wouldn't be contained to Twitter. Creators knew the time to drop videos was now, while the topic was still hot. First, mm. Illuminati starts off with this email containing supposedly nefarious activity. This editor is trying to steal her editor's style. Oh my gosh, really stealing! What's going on here, right? They're just asking about some plugin, a pre-existing asset that they may have used. Original content. Tom says, "Oof, I used to watch her stuff, but found it odd how she was able to churn out so many video essays at a regular pace. I had no proof that anything malicious was going on, but the vibes were just off, you know. Glad it wasn't all just in my imagination." Well, the the, the thing is, Legal Eagle, I don't even think needed to defend himself. I don't think they had to come out and say anything at all. No. Like, he didn't. ate Illuminati alive for the claim because it was so outrageous. Well, the fact that people went into her replies afterwards is very telling. Yeah. Who would know what cheating looks like other than the cheater? It, it, it's just, yeah, it's like self-reporting. Again, I, it's like a r random story that I had, but it's like... <laughs> when, you're, when you're plagiarizer, plagiarizing sometimes looks a little bit like plagiarizing, even if it's not, you know what I mean? It starts getting into your head and it starts like manifesting into real life. She didn't have to shoot herself in the foot like that at all, but she totally went ahead and did it despite there being absolutely no evidence of it. Like at all. Why attack someone who is just, he's just a dude who's a lawyer makes videos. Why would you attack him? The public What's was the cred? alive. And yet, it was still just the beginning of Blair's no good, very bad week. Thank you, Ramus. Thank you. Uh oh. Does this feel silly? Yeah.
As it turns out, the former members of Sad Milk were watching the situation from a distance, and it was becoming increasingly apparent to them that they couldn't stay silent about their own experiences with Blair for much longer. In light oh, of this new drama, as such, boy. The Click and Wonderstruck posted their own extensive threads about Blair with a slew of claims, which at the I'm time sitting were up for this one. Let's go. Click began by clarifying that his departure from their collab channel was not an amicable one, but that he mm. left because of Blair's behavior. He lists her typical behaviors as lashing out at friends and fans, paranoia, and generally poor or anger man paranoia yeah i wonder why <laughs> management to name a few eventually i believe pretty much the whole group left her the last meeting i ever had with her she spent half an hour screaming at me for an array of random things calling me a bad friend lazy and a bunch of random accusations that didn't really have anything to do with me there's no way you can have the resume you claim and be this fucking stupid and so on what the fuck yeah, paraphrasing versus plagiarism. Again, it would have been fine if it was, like, paraphrased or said differently, but she literally copied. Yeah, this is insane behavior. I would love to be a fly, in the, a fly on the wall listening to this shit. Abusive as hell. Yeah, like, actual relationship abuse, but except it's just a guy that, you know, shares a video channel with them no one even raised their voice back at her i left along with several other members half the group at the time she spent the next few months spreading lies and half truths about us on the sad milk reddit page and mm. vague posting on twitter i still have all the screenshots she would turn friends against you or specifically team up with people she knew didn't like you so she had allies against you rallying mainly banned problematic community members known to be liars and conflict seekers when people started questioning that maybe she was the reason everyone left there was a very convenient digging up of 11 to 14 year old videos of me. Stuff I made back when I started my channel in 2009 when I was a teenager. And as you can probably guess, some of the jokes from that time aged like milk. I publicly owned up to my past mistakes and apologized, doing my best to be transparent and honest about my past. She would still harp on it, ignoring the fact that it had already been addressed. Trying to That is so cringe, man. Every little kid did something cringe when they were- Every person as a little kid did at least one thing that was really cringe and just inappropriate. Because you're a fucking kid! You don't know any better! Like, oh my god, man. And then it, the fact that they address it and they, they just keep poking at it, that's that that would piss me the fuck off. You would not catch me dealing with that shit. To direct as much attention to it as possible. Publicly like, stating it was yourself. a bad apology, along with vague posting about it in comments on the collaboration channel. Maybe what in an attempt to get people fuck? to assume I had been kicked out for poor behavior, rather than leave because of her own behavior. She, assuming it was her, she had channel access, also liked to pull what I can only describe as very petty acts of revenge. For example, some some people left comments on the collaboration channel saying good that click left they obviously got ratioed hard as people were there for creators she would manually go in and delete the ratio in comments but leave the original hate comment she tried to gain control of my discord when it surpassed hers in size by tossing around accusations at staff and trying to get rid of my team and replacing <laughs> it with hers bro discord clout man the discord clout who the fuck cares bro so this is some high school shit. It, it, I'm pretty sure. How old is Blair? Probably like 25, 30, between that bracket, right? Yeah, get a hobby. This is her job, by the way, being a YouTuber. She's 32. Okay, that is just beyond me. If you're acting like that and you're 32, Jesus. Giving me the ultimatum to fire my entire senior team or be publicly fired from Sad Milk myself. This is just a brief summary of events. It's sad to see she hasn't changed. All of this painted Illuminati Man, as vindictive, this. petty, and spiteful. Um. Digging through your- <laughs> I knew people like this who would play MMOs, man. MMOs, but then when you get a big fucking head and you have millions of subscribers, I guess it's all that fucking clout that gets to your head. I, I, I totally get it. There were people with like, pe there was a woman on my server who had a guild with like 500 members in it, and she was like a woman that was divorced. And no, 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 she had two divorces, a kid, and uh, she had a boyfriend, and she had a she would sit online in World of Warcraft constantly recruiting people into her guild and then every time the number went up like a hundred members she would start getting like um what is it called like an ego like even more of an ego that she already had it's the same thing with like the discord thing that she's talk that they're talking about here
Your yeah, they need to, to control to something. Dirt, yeah, exactly. Your back, turning your friends against you. These are all hallmarks of, as any Twitter <laughs> girl would put it, a toxic person. Wonder revealed God. that he had lived with Blair for a period of time, and that that time was basically hell. After being threatened with a breach of contract for speaking out, I can confirm that the behavior Blair exhibits is entirely accurate here. Sad Milk at the time was the nearest thing to family I had, which sounds pathetic, but the content Yo, creator's Cole space Wilson. is a very isolating one. The amount of hours I would spend online making drafts, editor tutorials for new hires, staying up trying to get some editing in if editors were shorthanded, I missed Christmas with my brother and father fixing the mistake of the editor she hired, and I didn't even get a thank you. I didn't even get a thank you, and it took me more than half a month to even get paid i don't know man some people have demons in them i it's just some demons also thank you very very much for the resub man i really appreciate it um, um. <laughs> it's like what the fuck asteroid 2024 i it's all crumbling down for her at least i mean there's like there's this silver lining to this whole story Big piss. Massive piss. Yo, Necro, thank you so much for resubbing. I appreciate it. Look at the dog in her. She got that dog in her. She's gotta she's gotta be on that grind for that money, for that cloud. <laughs> yeah. You can already tell her life, so she's projecting her shit life onto others. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they get into her actual real life or anything like that. This is all essentially uh word of mouth thank you and it took me more than half a month to even get paid meanwhile she delays payments to editors so she can purchase expensive clothes visit bmw dealerships and spend hundreds on food in a day while i do hundreds of hundreds of food in a day what the fuck what do you mean hundreds of food in a day i sp I feel bad when people give me money for food. Yo, HP, thank you so much. BMW driver, yeah, expensive clothes. What? I just want a house to live in, man. You hold my Goodness gracious me. Every month or so, there's a new villain of the week. And they would one second be a normal person in our lives, and the next second, suddenly a hidden monster. <laughs> Are you kidding me, man? <laughs> Thank you, Alec. Thank you. Here's some for two nuggies. <laughs> That's enough for two nuggies. Could I just have something in my salon? I'll like eggs. Oh, thank you. Meanwhile, I'm here grinding and I'm saving money to live in an actual nice house instead of an apartment where my dog barks during videos, man. Yeah, keep in mind the BMW. Let me remotely important. You. What? Wait, there's more. What the, what the? through you guessed it blair's mouth to say sad milk split oh, on creative Jesus. differences is a joke it's a flat-out lie again i'm aware of the bridges mm -hmm. burned but i can confirm that call took place where she screamed cursed and had a meltdown towards the click in one topic it was a train wreck i tried making a schedules i motivated blair during another mental breakdown of hers not to delete the channel or the discord since i actively read through the comments on both and we oh had my god dude this is literally like yeah, she's got a demon in her, man. I'm not kidding. If you're threatening to delete channels and discords over some fucking drama that you conjured up, yeah, you're insane. You actually need to be like institutionalized or something. You need therapy to. for After sure. Of behind the scenes insults towards click and OT, it became so stale and negative. Yeah, we all took part, but after it going on so long, it just became day after day Blair would sit and check OT's social blade. She would make fake accounts to stalk them. Not just them, but a large portion of the commentary community. I've personally seen her try to get her lawyer to shut down anyone who says anything against her, and they ruined her day by saying, yeah, we can't really do anything. It's insane. Innocent people don't work so hard to try and silence others. We would get no work done. I can't count how many times I pleaded and set up meetings for us to do something and nobody cared. I thought I had a friend who was hurting then i saw i had moved to villain blair you can't hide anymore sooner or later you are going to push everyone who cared about you away no it's crazy it's almost like it already happens you. but you made your fears a reality all on your own Oz Media posted a similar call out thread, reiterating much of the same sentiment about how she was a toxic, vindictive person given their prior public collabs with blair and the photos of blair's house that wonder provided This is unironically worse than Asmin. 
Do you want to know why? Do you actually want to know why it's worse than Asmund? Because at least Asmund's shit isn't on the floor. I'm not kidding. This is actually worse than Asmund. Asmund did a fucking house tour, right? But there's nothing on the floor. Like, there's not, like, open cardboard boxes. There was, like, a everything is on a table or up on something. There's, like, maybe, like, dirt and grime on the kitchen and shit. But, like, yeah, so Asmund has fucking furniture to put shit on. Yeah, he has an order and an organization. This is, like, actually kind of nuts. Yeah, yeah. at least Asmund's room is a cardboard furniture shirt. Dude, th the o opened, like, the clothes? I don't think Asmund had clothes in his, like, uh, like, littered anywhere. I think he had blankets and, um, other stuff. It's just so... I don't know, there's just something about it. It, it just gives me bad vibes. If there was some credibility to these accusations. If these claims, along with the accusations of plagiarism, were true, a more I clear can fix and sinister her image of I can fix her. was forming. The blood the wall? Public, none of it was easily verifiable, and without actual evidence showing that these events took place, who was to say what really happened? These threads were both posted on the 23rd of April, and five days later, Blair would apologize for what she described as jumping mm -mm -mm. the gun on Legal Eagle. Despite oh, everything that was said no. about her, this was the- Oh no, the the consequences of my actions have been ruining my channel. Oh no, now I want to apologize and backtrack. Jeez. Where she just away. Neither the click nor wonder said they would be posting anything to their channels about it, meaning whatever allegations existed could have died then and there. And this could have been a forgotten footnote in the plagiarism drama. Instead, Blair tempted fate with a new response video. All right, twisting the a narrative. Video by Blair Can't titled wait. Illuminati Exposed was framed as the conclusive video on the topic. Blair opened by reiterating her regret over the tweet about Legal Eagle. Truthfully, I should have looked into this more instead of just putting the information out there the second I had a gut reaction about it. I should have asked him what the emails were about, but I didn't. And I made a mistake and plain and simple, I was wrong. So to Legal Eagle and, and team, I just want to reiterate that I messed up and I'm sorry for any stress this may have caused you and, of course, to your team. She then sets out to debunk the accusation that she had plagiarized an older documentary by repurposing its script. She points out the part she read was a quote, not meant to be her own words, and that it was all- No, it was- <sighs> Okay, all so right. credited in the description of the video. In his own video, he shows where I'm audibly quoting a direct line from the documentary, and even visually, you can see it on the screen with the quotation marks. Additionally, you can even see the dual ellipses on either end of that quote, indicating that more of that source was being cited. When you go to my source uh -huh. page for this particular episode, you can also see that the documentary is listed as a source. This is completely fair. The editing around that point of the video was a bit confusing and may lead some okay. to believe the quote was being stolen sure. rather than quoted, but given the appearance of a quote on screen during sure. the part each bomber guy showed, it seemed to be a valid response. However, this is mostly where the valid responses from Blair end, as the rest uh... of the video devolves into unsubstantiated claims and a malicious revelation of personal information to try and discredit her former friend. Her second Makes a video about plagiarism. Also, this guy bad. Segment Jesus, on the click opens man. by stating that she was aware of his use of slurs in 10 to 14 year old videos, and that it had nothing to do with his departure from the group. However, she follows up by saying that the click was still using horrifying language, her words, not mine, when she met him, specifically using the R slur, which has been deemed unacceptable. By who, I'm not sure. Maybe her uh -huh. Discord friend group, maybe Twitter, or maybe Reddit's moderation team. And of course, when yeah. Those videos surfaced. It wasn't really yeah, ad hominem to me, as Oz Media and I had actually talked about how Click had been using the Arsler while we played games together. I thought, or I wanted to assume, that I had misheard, but Oz said that he was uncomfortable with it and said something, but the language continued. The point is brushed aside as she moves on to a more serious allegation against the Click that he was harboring a predator in his Discord server and did nothing. 
Oh, here we go. I am harboring a predator, but then it turns out I'm the predator. Apparently, here we go. I'm ready. Server, there was a 19 year old boy who bragged about dating a 12 year old girl. Naturally, this raised some red flags, and after a server mod reached out to him for clarification, this individual reiterated that it wasn't a joke of any kind, and that him dating a 12 year old was even supported by a therapist. Blair claimed that the Clicks moderators did nothing to ban him from the server, forcing a mod to come to her for assistance. She then banned this predator from her personal community server, the Sad Milk server, and reported them to Discord. Blair then claims sure. that this happened right after one of the Clicks admins was caught sharing NSFW with known minors and cites information from Rain.com to explain that this is a common tactic amongst groomers, desensitizing minors to loot content over time. So we used this individual's ID number and we banned them from the Sad Milk server and from my server, and we reported them to Discord's trust and safety team, who we hope did pursue this further. In an effort okay. to have action taken against this predator in the Clicks Discord. She messaged one topic, another member of Sad Milk and Click's good friend, asking for him to do something about it. After seeing the degenerate material in question, he left the group chat and reported and removed the individual himself. She concludes okay. this section of the video by saying that the Click cultivated an environment that was unsafe for miners on his server. On your Discord server that had, and likely still has, miners present, you as an adult need to do the right thing and actually pay attention to what goes down in your server or ensure a team will take action against inappropriate behavior. I am sorry to those minors who were spoken to in such an inappropriate way. Now, in this video, Blair never states that this was the reason why she stopped working with the click. In fact, she doesn't address the vast majority of the points. <laughs> I like how he has a down vote on it. I don't get what this- why is this fucking- why is this relevant again? Like, what- why why is this relevant again i don't quite understand are they like trying to make that person look bad for banning a child predator in the discord or what he raised in his thread instead am i missing something highlighting that he used the r slur <laughs> and is supposedly indifferent towards files being on his discord she gives a two minute diatribe passionately discussing why grooming children is bad as if anyone needed okay, an explanation cool. she even yeah. states that this situation made her regret trying to get his channel reinstated for not when it was banning him deleted for some old content that violated terms of service she claims she she's trying to say he didn't take action fast enough <laughs> but yeah and then they they did ban him like what oh man dude this is some this is not even high school level shit. This is just manipulation. She spoke to YouTube directly. It implies her efforts are the reason why the channel still exists today. But because she tried of to his make look bad. community, yeah. she now regrets that. Many were quick to point out the ridiculousness of the allegation, especially with no screenshots to back up the notion that the click hadn't tried to help. Given the server had 40,000 members, there were bound to be a few bad apples in the bunch. Nevertheless, the section held in comparison to the issues present in her response to Wonder. It similarly avoided most of what was said in the thread, instead pivoting to attacking his character as a means to discredit his claims. Blair begins by claiming she never neglected to pay Wonder, which was one of his allegations, where he said that payments to editors were delayed while Blair visited BMW dealerships and ordered Uber Eats. He says that <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over this spending hundreds of dollars on food, buying fucking Gucci, Versace clothes, and going to BMW dealerships, but not paying the guy editing vid videos for him. I just, I can't, man. That is insane to me. It took oh more God, than half man. a month for him to be paid, while Blair claims that this was just the way she and many companies pay their employees on a bi-weekly basis. She then says the reason Wonder lived with her was because she generously extended him a job offer for oh an my God. and allowed him to live under her roof for a time. According to her, despite this generosity, he trashed the car she lent it to him. Within one month of using the vehicle, the car was visibly soiled, trash was littered in the car, it contained- Oh my God, there's some socks and two dr bottles- this is trashed, by the way. My guy, it's it's some fucking socks, uh, a, a candy, and two bottles. What the fuck do you mean trash? In dirty clothing, which consisted of like I think two pairs of dirty boxers and like maybe three mismatched socks. There was also a huge crack that went across most of the windshield, and for some reason, the glove box compartment in the front passenger. I get fucking cracks in my window all the time. I don't understand. I've had that happen to me where a rock flew into my window and then I'm like, all right, very cool. I got a crack in my window. Amazing.
this i don't know like it's, it's, a, it's a broken thing like what, what do you mean your seat was somehow broken the state of the vehicle was shocking to be honest but shocking at point, just... lady you are mentally ill what do you mean shocking you fix this little box, take out the fucking boxers or some shit. Like, we saw her fucking house back here. Her, her room. Where is it? Right here? Yeah, her room. It was disgusting. Car back and know that it couldn't be damaged any further. This segment mostly comes down to Blair publishing petty interpersonal drama that never needed to be made public in the first place. But in fairness, Wonder yeah. initially did the same. By oh, 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 here we go. Yeah, a fucking suitcase, her bra. What, what is going on here? A bunch of clothes, a d cardboard boxes. That this is a. Big fucking red flag for me. If I enter a room and I see this shit, I'm noping the fuck out. Yeah, it's like a nest. Posting pictures of her house that made it look like it belonged on an episode of Hoarders. What the? Eh, you can't see this. Blair Hold on. You, eh, oh, yeah, you can't see this. There's a bunch of shoes on the floor. I never bring my shoes inside past, like, the fucking door. It's so crazy, man. Mental health and address his intention of suicide, as well as a message where he stated that the emotional pressure from hers will push him over the edge. Blair didn't yeah, explain why this was at all relevant, but it appeared to be an attempt by her to make Wonder look unstable. Inexplicably, she spends a few. But then she makes herself look unstable in turn. If you actually look at the evidence, oh, that's crazy. And is talking about how her dog and his dog didn't get along when they lived together. The tension began with our dogs and his unwillingness to help. Who the cares? I did everything Who I cares? thought of at the time to introduce James and Casper in a way that facilitated a good relationship between the dogs. They met on neutral ground at a dog park and only had supervised play at the house. Well, I appreciate her <sighs> expert analysis so fucking, on yeah, which dog man. was in the right or whatever. Believe it or not there actually is a reason for this it was the reason she provided for why there was so much conflict while they lived sometimes dogs don't get along yeah and sometimes your owner is a fucking complete schizo and you feed off that energy as a dog because you're a dog and you look around the room for a human's energy especially your owners and feed off of that so it's not even the dog's fault like, who the fuck cares? This is so irrelevant. Just yap, 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 yap. Together. Yeah, cute Wonder dogs. I mean, they're just a behavior, dog. But Blair suggested that it came down to the dog situation, her recommending her therapist to him, which created a conflict of interest, and the car being trashed. In response to the accusation of being a hoarder, Blair clarifies that this was just one messy room in her house due to the ongoing process of moving in. And isolate. Bro. I... I ongoing process of moving in but the shoes on the floor and a bunch of cardboard boxes with like clothes like hanging around yeah that's some fucking cope her right there actually holds some right. she posted an irrelevant photo right. with the intention of humiliating that's her. moving in <laughs> yeah apparently these minor details since the out of context photos of the house Bruh. i moved into are being used as a way to show that i'm a supposed monster and that quote my home is a mess like hoarders bad and just what was the point of this wonder why would you even bother posting something like this except to humiliate me? This was a room that we were using. Don't, don't, don't have a messy room, man. Then nobody's gonna humiliate you. At least like Asmund, like with Asmund's like dirty, uh, like messy house. At least he doesn't deny it. He's like, you know, like yeah, it's a little bit dirty, but you know, I live like this and I like it. It's like. This bitch tries to fucking step around it. To move. Yeah, and owning up to it. it was off limits to you. That yes, organized chaos. Shows your consistent lack of respect for Oz's and my boundaries. And wonder, Crazy. I am sorry that I was ever friends with you. Towards the end of the video, Blair starts crying as she expresses how deeply the falling out between her and Oz Media affected her. You were right. I am afraid of looking stupid and weak online. And... Yet, I am those things right now. You've been with me through a lot of really intense and personal situations in my life. Uh, you were there throughout the entire process of my Yep, 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 and yep. I wish you guys could see my hands right now. Yep, 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 When I had to run out the door suddenly because there was a crash part in her room and they didn't know if she was going to make it. And you said you'd stay at the house and watch Casper so I could go to my home. 
The video concludes with Blair acknowledging that she wants to take responsibility for her faults, such as her impulsivity in the legal eagle situation. Her media fan base, with little knowledge of the situation, were supportive. However, some viewers found her remarks lacking substance. They noted that the segments on the click appeared to be thin on evidence, despite her initial promise of providing screenshots as evidence. No actual screenshots were shown to support her claims against the click. Furthermore, many took issue with her disclosing Wonder's mental health status. Posting Wonder's suicide note is disgusting. I don't care. Yeah, I don't, that, I, I kind of missed that part. I, I, I heard and I was like, oh my gosh. That's, that's sad. Like, why would you post that? Kara, you two fell out. He trusted you with a very sensitive situation, and you use that to get the focus off of yourself. That's disgusting. You have no shame. This is That's immensely disappointing. I was hoping the information and rumors I'd been hearing about you for years were untrue, but it looks as mm. if I was sorely mistaken. The click hinted that a detailed response was to come, while the other former Sad Milk members posted their own rebuttals on Twitter. While the dislike bar on Blair's video climbed, people waited with bated breath to see if the click's response would be the final nail in the coffin of this saga. Sure. Wow, wow. Oh my god, that was kind of loud. A little bit of change of pace. On May 2nd, 2023, The Click released his video. It only Ooh, addresses his portion of views. Illuminati's response, as well as verifying the claims he previously made about her. To debunk Bye. the claim about him not doing anything in regards to the Discord predator, The Click clarified that he was asleep while the situation <laughs> was unfolding, and by the time he woke up, it was already resolved. She brought one topic into a chat room, as she shown in her video and her accusations. However, her statement in these DMs about Click knowing is very odd, as I would have been very unconscious. When yeah, the emotional manipulation is like, he knew that he had a child in a 40,000, like, oh my god, 40,000 members in a Discord and you're supposed to know about everyone? Like, shut the fuck she up, man. Be referring to me knowing by the time I woke up, but the fact remains I wasn't there, nor did I endorse this random creep. In her video, Blair claims she reached out to the click for his aid in resolving the issue. As he shows in his, he was the first one to reach out, while her responses back were fairly vague and didn't provide any of the relevant information at all. This recontextualized her messages with one topic. They weren't about resolving the predator problem, they were about making the click look bad to his friend. Instead of directly messaging the click to address her- Hold on, I gotta read this, hold on. Oh, wait, 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 they were about making the click look bad to his friend. In click server and click knowing. Confo was public in a server. Multiple members went to his staff and that did nothing. Proof? Where? My staff in there had to ban the person and attack their Discord ID to report them. And this is on the heels of Click's admin sending BDSM tests to minor aged mods. <laughs> Friend. Instead Receipts of directly messaging where? the click to address her concerns, Blair messaged his friend and accused him of doing nothing. However, it's important to note that the click wasn't around at the time, so reaching out to him directly wouldn't have been possible anyway. Uh... He was asleep. In his response, the click addresses a point that Blair emphasized, but is seen by some as a non-issue. Blair claimed that she could never be friends with someone who used the R slur in video games. However, the click points out that despite her messaging others about how problematic it was, she continued to hang out with him regardless. She would never be friends with someone that used that language, yet she regularly played games with me as a friend during this time, where I allegedly kept on saying these things. Which one is it? I, I don't think you can have both. He then says he stopped using the word retarded in content as he didn't want to offend anyone. This pivots to her deleting comments, which while it can't be proven, a before and after screenshot of the Sad Milk channel showed that anyone speaking positively about him or protesting his removal did in fact have their comments suspiciously deleted. Crazy. On her main making a narrative, making it a one person look bad, controlling the and narrative. Rumors Damn. In comment sections, saying, I didn't say the N word in this old videos, bitch just stinks. saying the videos in question were between 10 and 14 years old, by the way. But all of this is relatively petty. Even the accusations regarding Click's Discord could be chalked up to miscommunication. But he then reveals she was spreading rumors about him not respecting his Discord mods, as if unwashed internet janitors deserve respect in the first place. No <laughs> you know what? Kind of based, yeah, you know, like... <laughs> to you guys that moderate my discord 
<laughs> okay, actually, some offense intended. They spend hours some of their lives to help intended. some YouTuber they love and look up to. The very least thing any content creator can and should do is give their teams the respect they deserve. Wait, 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 Mods wait, wait, have wait. always been the backbone of every YouTube and Twitch community. To disrespect them and try to just throw them away is insane. They are the ones who have a pulse on the community. Like, I'll never be able to properly thank my entire team, but God, I'll try. Ah, this click one topic sh has me heated. These stupid f how could you not care about the people who care about your community the most? How? <laughs> Usually, YouTubers try to fight against cultivating parasocial relationships. I guess Blair didn't get the memo. She continues uh... spreading the claim that the click harbored a on his Discord server and threw a hissy fit about him making a harmless white van joke in an old video, as well as pulling other jokes out of context to imply he was a degenerate. Here's the same chat room again, in what I'm assuming is suggesting that my, uh, my god, I'm so down with the kids boomer joke from Twitter has implications how does it have bro <laughs> saying you're young and hip with the kids is ped angry oh, my God. oh the real. think i'm so cool that's blair then began bro. enlisting people to dig through 10 year old let's plays to find dirt on him again here's the video still up with the r slur at 340 ish keep in mind this was 2010 when the click was in high school and didn't have any kind of audience she talked with glee about the day when the public would eventually become aware of his past slur usage and cancel him ever since we made the sad milk announcement some fans have been putting it together i hate while YouTube I'm drama bad, so much some are man figuring it out listen i have click on video saying the f slur and r slur he will put himself with his own ego and i won't have to deal with any of that oh yeah it's in his old videos some discord users oh my are god his mods. old videos some are, e -girls, some are traps and some make machiavellian plots to destroy their friends careers because 10 years ago they said retard the amount of spite you must feel to devote this much energy to someone who did nothing wrong to you is unimaginable i'm a level with y'all here reading through things and seeing people excuse click saying the r slur because it was 10 years ago and it's irrelevant is super yikes to me Super yikes. yikes! Oh boy. It's super yikes, guys. Again. Oh I'm my god. Yikes, bro. Yikes! <laughs> I, 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 unironically, if you use the word yikes in any given context, uh, unless it's unironic and you're, uh, unless you're being ironic, it's, it, you're, you're done. Just. <laughs> Super yikers! Yikes! Oh my I'm god! Ages click and that word wasn't ever in my vocabulary. Me? Not ten years ago, not now. Because it was never appropriate. Yikes, Same with him Solana. saying the N-word and F-slur. Being edgy is not an excuse. And seeing it dismissed so lightly like that is actually gross. As if Idubs wasn't calling himself <laughs> and his fans NFs three years prior to these videos. And that's not to mention what goes on in every 15-year-old's Xbox Live lobby. <laughs> <laughs> if all of that wasn't enough, Blair was also paying people hundreds of dollars to sift through material to find compromising clips of the click. I need you to help find the click saying the R slur in Sad Milk's raw audio. Oh my god, I I'm gonna- I will pay you $200 to find him saying the R word in 2010. <laughs> dollars to find it. Blair spending more money than most people spend on groceries to expose some Bro. Swedish dude for saying the R word. As for why, it seems like it was Vindictive either out of jealousy bitch, that his man. own channel was taking off or out of spite that he left the collab channel due to her behavior and no longer wanted to be her buddy. Why would she go through all this trouble, even spend money just to try to ruin myself to spite and him. others? Why would she do all of this to someone who considered her a friend. However, this wasn't even the worst part. Got click saying the N-word apparently, and here we have a, a YouTube link. 16 seconds in, the alt account is gonna love this one. This was in reference to an anonymous Twitter account Blair was running with the intention of sowing dissent among the click's viewers and damaging his reputation. Bro, I, I've never dedicated this much time. Like, I used to report art thieves on DeviantArt when I was 12 years old, and I never dug this deep. I never cared that much. I just reported them, laughed at them when they cried about it, and uh, I left it at that. 32, by the way. Yeah, 32 years old. She Jesus, carried this out dude. not only on Twitter, but also Crazy. on Reddit, because of course it was on Reddit. She made the following post pretending to be a random click fan. 
I saw the sad milk announcement. I follow all the milkmen on their social media. She to be I'm a seeing the comments on their new announcement, fan. and I feel there's a big piece of the puzzle that's missing. We don't know what happened. I made an account on Reddit to see if this subreddit is active, and I see you're still talking about this too. I think this is a very good place to vent and rant about what I figured out because no one else was talking about it. So I'm really wondering if I'm just freaking out over nothing. Like, it really looks like creative differences is dumb AF. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, one topic leaving his supporter server and then watching so many of his mods disappear and Wonderstruck talking about how he hates his friends fighting and even Clicky not streaming as much and deleting some of his streams and clips. <laughs> I think something happened, guys. I think I figured out what really happened. I was- If anything, you can take into account that, like, he can make himself feel better that sh she lived in his- <sighs> Oh my god. This is- I, I can't even fathom- being this engrossed in some fucking dog shit drama that does like just move on to with your life you have a million subscribers on youtube and you're wasting this fucking time maybe if she fucking didn't write this dog shit on reddit she could actually not plagiarize youtube videos man this takes like fucking at least 30 minutes to lie to write i can't i don't have fucking 30 minutes to myself to fucking do anything except play a fucking video game online at the end of stream and work, like fuck me. A big I thought his streams were terminally online. Yeah. Like me, even if I couldn't donate as much. This post goes on to claim that Blair must have seen Click's old slur usage, and that's what actually caused Sad Milk to dissolve. After Blair posted to Reddit with her official account, she then used this alt account asking if this was some kind of cover-up and claiming to be disappointed that Blair would hang out with someone who used the R slur and F slur. The Doobie Schmerz Reddit also replied to other users saying the Click needed to apologize and that he couldn't erase the past. The same scheme of having all her alt accounts interact with one another was repeated on Twitter. <laughs> there, her bio simply read i know the truth her <laughs> tweets included blocking me to run away from the fact that the click said the n-word doesn't make you look good unless you're okay with this language oh and, my God, and i do not man. apologizing for saying the n-word the account was even responding to deaf noodles at the peak of his popularity trying to get him to cover the clicks horrifying language keep in mind all of this was blair on her official account she would tweet about how non-poc creators shouldn't use that word and then respond to herself on the alt account showing her former collaborator using Schizo posting underneath your own fucking uh, Twitter page. Oh my god. In a decade prior, when people would tweet about being unproblematic streamers, she would respond with the same, even to her fellow collaborators on the Sad this Milk channel. This is hours of effort. Hours. In November I'm not the same kidding. Was created. After a full week of spamming friends, colleagues, YouTubers, and anyone she thought could kickstart a significant controversy, Blair shelved the project. Regardless, the proof of her intentions remained on Discord. Here is the same account Dubishmerz on Twitter. This was an account I remember distinctly from 2020-2021 that was relentlessly harassing myself, my friends, my colleagues, my streaming colleagues, past colleagues, ex Sad Milk members, community members, stat, you name it, you name it. At the time I wrote it off as a disgruntled troll with a little bit too much time on their hands and tried my best to ignore it. This was Blair all along. <laughs> she was me. Imagine this guy's shock, bro. He thought it was just some random unhinged fucking person and it turns out it's actually Blair. The proof. Like, it, it is her doing this. Wasting her time. Oh, she's To spread her stuff because she probably knows deep down inside that the stuff she was digging up on me and all the stuff she was doing was so petty that she could never actually make a public statement of it. So she did this. Just to get back at it. Yeah, that unhinged, absolutely. She, she paid people to dig up. Two hundred dollars. Harass me for months. Why? The top comment on Clip's video was from Ill. Rob Media himself, who had assisted Blair with a lot of her shenanigans. Hey everyone, I wanted to thank the Click for being so forgiving with how complicit I was with a lot of Blair's behavior, especially with her alt account. I should have done more to stop her, I, I honestly don't remember much, but I've seemed to mentally distance myself from these actions and my involvement. This doesn't excuse my part in this, I at the time was apparently aware of Blair doing this. I don't remember my involvement. All I have to go off of is that screenshot Click showed at the given timestamp. I have a lot of growing I need to do to fix the mistakes I made with backing someone I genuinely believe was the right choice. I'm mm -hmm. taking responsibility now though and admitting that I've 
fucked up by not only backing the wrong horse, but doing nothing when this horse seemingly started to kick and bite people. Yes, the horse will be a horse, but I could have probably done more. The remainder okay, of the comment fair. section consisted of fans expressing their shock at these revelations. When posts about the drama started spreading to Blair's own subreddit, they were deleted before they could gain any traction, and then the Reddit was shut down. Meanwhile, <laughs> other subs were readily spreading the info from the video, appalled at how vindictive and unhinged her behavior was. Tweets went viral calling her a garbage human being, while others reposted their messages from the comment section sharing their sympathies for those she tried to hurt. As public distaste for Illuminati grew, her subscriber count fell Ooh. in excess of 10,000 to 20,000 per day. On May 11th, wow. Wonderstruck released his own video, detailing his own experience working for Blair, reiterating everything he said in the thread. While his claims were less shocking, they still added to the overall narrative of how unstable Blair was and still is. Losing 10k a day is actually kind of sad. 10k a day. To put it in perspective, I gain between 100 to 300 people a day. 10,000 a day. Deserved? Oh, absolutely. No, it's just crazy to me. Just, like, you pissed this away and for what? The cat was officially out of the bag, and now miscellaneous pieces of Blair's past were coming back to haunt her. With the veneer of charitability she had put up gone, every old drama she had been through was relitigated. For example, Blair had previously collaborated with the commentary talk show host Tommy C, contributing to the Shot From The Point news channel. After a distasteful joke was made about her friend, she logged into the channel and deleted every upload she was a part of. Uploads where she ironically played a caricature of a pro-cancel culture, dyed hair, social justice warrior. When criticized for this move by Nicholas Diorio, Blair contacted the artist whose art he utilized for the thumbnail and encouraged them to file a DMCA takedown on the video, out of spite for being criticized. When the video was reinstated, she contacted another copyright holder to try and do the same. The title of it was, Have Your Mods Flag This One Down, Bitch. <laughs> so it's funny that he titles the video that. She would have... The, uh, I... I'm in shock, genuinely. I don't know how you can have this much free time to, like, instigate all these fucking problems with other people that aren't, like, doing anything, anything to you where she could be spending her time actually making videos and, like, like not plagiarizing, like, just... I wish I had this much energy in a day. I really do. I really do. I envy it. <laughs> It has to be a social experiment? No, man. It's, it's not. <laughs> this is horrifying. And then the video gets flagged down. For the time, this drama was swept under the rug. Tommy C, Nicholas Diorio, and Tipster didn't exactly have the pull to get it into the drama news cycle. And yeah. Blair moved communities to a new audience of 160,000 subs. But now, people are finally discussing this four-year-old drama, since it shows Blair's behavior is not a new phenomenon. Ever since the revelations about her behavior surfaced, Blair has remained silent. Her videos continue to receive around 100,000 views per up. Yeah, but they're going down. This was six months ago, by the way. Now they're down to like 20, 40K. But, but many of the top comments now focus on her off-screen conduct rather than the content itself. Her subscriber count is in free fall, and so far, she's given no indication that she'll be responding to her critics wow. anytime soon. Given the magnitude of the drama, it's difficult to imagine any kind of response to she's it that would be satisfactory. A comparison and, uh, many have made is to Creepshow Art, another female commentary YouTuber like known this. for criticizing others That's while presenting this. herself as morally superior, despite later being revealed through leaked private messages to be a pathological liar and manipulator, as well as Man. borderline stalker. However, Who the one fuck key is difference this? is that there were know. hints of Shannon's deceptive <laughs> behavior in her video. Whereas Blair appeared normal and reasonable in her content. The true extent of Blair's twisted mindset could only be glimpsed at by looking at the destruction left in her wake. As for whether Blair's reputation could ever recover, it's unlikely. This situation has deeply impacted the way she's perceived by her audience, though it is possible for her channel performance to recover over time. She it seems won't. to be making efforts to move forward and rebuild, but overcoming the public's negative perception of her will be a significant challenge along the way. More than anything, she's lost the opportunity to befriend other creators. Who would want to work with someone who might pay people to dig up your 10-year-old videos to find dirt if you ever get or or like put in the investment of becoming her friend and then them taking out your rage and your anger issues on them I, yeah, everyone talks about that but nobody talks about the fact that being yelled at is so piss. fucking tiring yo thank you thank you thank you sany man and jn i really appreciate it thank you so much it's just uh, it's tiring, man.
Who's more hated right now, Melania or Sniper? Well, I would say it's probably both. Both are about equal at this moment in, in time. Give us like a five years for her to show up and explore with us video. Don't joke about that! Forget on their bad side. Who <laughs> runs a handful of alt accounts <laughs> spanning multiple websites dedicated exclusively she to exposing her yet. former friends? And that's on top no, of but the she general something just as bad. Seen. Spreading lies, leaking someone's suicide note, abusing the DMCA system to silence criticism, and smearing someone as a protector because of one incident in their public discord server that they weren't even aware of. You would think that using someone's honest mistakes, or even simply their vulnerabilities against them, is the last thing anyone who claims to care about those who are weak and more vulnerabilities- Wait, 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 hobbies include uh, what? You would think that using- Hobbies include reading and crying. Yeah, reading- reading fucking YouTube comments and shit. God, man, YouTube comments and Twitter posts, that's what you like to read and cry about, man. Oh my god. Well, now we know. And this was six months ago, so this guy's gonna make another video probably at some point, considering it's coming back. <laughs> Reading Discord chats. That's a good video, though. God, that was, in that was insane. Insane. I too cry when I read on Twitter. It was only because it's Twitter. I don't cry. I don't cry. I just I get irritated, but then I realize I can just turn off my phone and not look at it. It was definitely a video. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. It was a good video, though. I liked it. This is six months ago, by the way. How many Twitter followers does she have now? I wonder. I wonder if her Twitter followers went down, too. Or people follow her just to spite her, probably. If I had to guess. Illuminati. What the hell? Where's her fucking... Is this it? Where's her fucking Twitter? What? Illuminati. Ah, oh, there it is. Wow, she lost 6,000 followers. That's a lot, man. I'm not gonna lie, that's a lot. Currently suing Ozmania and some of her former editors for exposing her. NDA contract. Oh no, the NDA contract of being my friend. HPL of F4P asked me. Alana, I'm gonna sue you for being a virtual being that doesn't exist except in my mind. Just I, threatened to sue Legal Eagle, but believe that was dropped. That yeah, shit. of course it was, because you're fighting a literal hey, lawyer. F4P, good luck trying to slap a lawsuit on Yeah, a lawyer who owns his own law firm with other lawyers, route. by the way. I've been hitching a ride in a noggin way before it was cool. Get in line, Chum. Mm-mm. If the other side is a crazy bitch that NDA ain't worth the paper they crapped on it, there's no fucking way they signed an NDA to be her friend or like be in a group with her or some shit. Lana abuses us mods on the regular. She locks us in the basement and beats us up on the regular. The only food we get is corpses of cooked chatters. You do fucking. What? I, I give you the most delicious cooked up chatters that are premium meat, man. Your mods don't have to sign an NDA? Yeah, if I'm a bitch, tell them. Alana, you got exposed. It's Jova for me. Surely the bot steaks are tasty too. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Man, no, 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 you can't. CONFESSION! Now you gotta rebrand. Guys, I don't have thousands of dollars to get a new VTuber model, man. And my voice is pretty distinct. I think people would find me. I can't rebrand. They're oiled up and cooked. Eh. Time to move AI VTuber channel. Yep. Nope.
It's silver. Mommy! Piss, piss, piss. Shit! Piss, 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 piss. Fuck, 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 fuck,